like that? Hmm? You got it. Good boy. So this is little Oompa. Oompa Loompa. Um, he is my companion for the next couple weeks. Yes, you are. I like to give him lots of space. Um, so yes, my trip to Liberia sucked. So, um, I know United gets a lot of shit after they, like, dragged that person off the plane, like, kicking and screaming and bloody. You know, that seems fair to be wary of them after that. Um, but normally... I fly United with no problem. Hi. Um, but uh, but this time, so I was originally supposed to leave Tucson, Arizona, for Liberia on the thirty first. Um. So uh, I was staying in Phoenix with my dad at the time. So the night that I was going to drive well, the late night slash early morning that I was going to drive up, well, down to Tucson. Man, I'm bad at telling stories. <laughs> um, I got a notification that my plane was going to be delayed. And the problem with that was because it was delayed, I would miss my connection, and I would miss my next connection, and I would never make it to Liberia. So I called United, and they were like, no problem, we'll get you out tomorrow. And I was like, oh, that's sweet. One, like, not tomorrow, but the day after. And I was like, that's great. One more day with my with my dad and my sister and her husband. And we can play some Kingdom Death Monsters from World of Warcraft. I was super stoked. And when my brother, my other brother was there, my half-brother. Who I found out through 23andMe, like, what? I mean, apparently that's been happening a lot. People finding their long-lost or unknown relatives through DNA testing. Because their parents were a little less than forthcoming with their, uh, shenanigans and escapades when they were younger but that's a whole different story that's a whole different story um so i was like great um then the next day came so the first time it was delayed it just said because the flight that like the flight to tucson was delayed so my flight would be delayed and i was like okay shit happens the next time so the next morning, I'm like, getting ready to go. Yay, leaving. I get another text being like, oh, I'm so sorry. Your flight's delayed because the crew didn't have, because of another delay from another plane, the crew for your flight didn't have enough time off, like federal rest or federal whatever. Like, you can't just work a certain amount of hours, especially in the air, I guess. You know, don't want to torture people. Um... So that flight was delayed, and again, that was delayed, which affected all my other connections, which meant I wasn't going to get into Liberia on time. So now, we have now changed it twice, so we change it again. Now we've changed it for, like, five days in the future. So, like, I've now, like, lost a week. <laughs> so that day comes, and you would not believe this. <laughs> Three times in a row my plane again was delayed, but this time it doesn't tell me till I've driven from Phoenix to Tucson. So I go from Phoenix to Tucson, which is like an hour and a half, two hour drive. Not nothing terrible. So I go, I'm there. It's like 8 AM. I'm like resting in my house before I'm picking up my, like my mom's extra bag to get ready to go. And while I'm WhatsApping her, I get a notification that, sorry, your plane's delayed. <laughs> I can't. And I just, I'm on FaceTime with WhatsApp with my mom, and I'm like, is this like a sign from God? Am I going to die in Africa? Am I going to die on this plane? Like, clearly I should not be going. So she calls them, and this is where my life just gets ridiculously worse. She calls them, and she, they say, well, the only way we can get her to Liberia today and not with not like 10 days from now or 8 days from now is if she catches a flight from Phoenix that's leaving at like 11.30. It's eight o'clock or something while I'm in Tucson. It's at least a two hour drive, right? And that's if I leave right away. So my mom's like, see if you can make it. Now, this is after, like I hadn't slept. I had driven at like 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. or something from Phoenix to Tucson. And now I'm driving back from Tucson to Phoenix trying to catch this flight. <sighs> 
So I like immediately leave. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, there's, I can probably make it. There's not too much traffic. Sometimes there's horrible traffic. Like, you can't help that. So I'm like, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I get in my car and I start driving. And I'm not like paying attention very much about anything except getting there on time. And I'm sure you can tell where this story is going. Well, maybe you can't. So, so I'm driving. I'm like maybe like 40, 50 miles from Phoenix. And my low gas light comes on. And I don't know if you've ever driven from Tucson to Phoenix or Phoenix to Tucson. There is a, like a stretch where there's nothing. Like you're in the desert. There's shit. There's just sand and cacti and cars. <laughs> just it. That's it. Maybe a few mountains over here. You know, so it was, so I'm sitting there being like, okay. And unlike other cars, when my car does this, it'll, there's a little like button you can press that says like, how many miles left do I have of gas? And it was like, you have 10 miles left, like 50 miles from Phoenix. Um, I don't see an exit in sight. All, I, like, you know, like I'm talking about like wasteland. You can see. I don't see shit but sand. But now there is a curve coming up. But at this point, I'm freaking out. I'm exhausted. I haven't slept. I've driven back and forth and back and forth and back and forth day and day and day. I'm exhausted. And also, and also, because like my day couldn't get worse. My phone is also at like 9%. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but my Android, if I don't use like an actual Android Samsung charger, it does like slow charging. And if it's already too low of a battery, if you use it at all, it doesn't matter if it's plugged in. It's really annoying. So I was using a charger in my car charging port, my USB port, but it wasn't really charging. It was like keeping it, but if I was gonna use it, my battery would die. So I'm sitting here thinking, well, fuck. If I run out of gas on the side of the road, it's not like I can call AAA. It's not like I can call like my USAA like roadside assistance because my phone will be dead. So I call my dad, because he's living in Phoenix, right? I call my dad, and I'm at this point, I'm gonna be honest, I'm in hysterics, I'm hysterical, I'm really upset. Um, and I'm on the phone with him being like, what is happening? I can't take this, I'm driving back and forth, I have to make this flight, I have to be there like by 10.30 or something to check my bags, and now I'm almost out of gas, I'm stranded on the side of the road, oh my god, I'm in, like, I'm panicking. And my dad's like, okay. I'm going to get in my car, I'm going to buy like one of those things to put gas in and I'm going to bring it to you. He's like, but where are you? And I'm like, I don't know, I don't know any of the exits, I can't see anything. And then, like a fucking oasis in the desert, I make this turn and nah, there's gas. But in my mind, I'm like, am I even going to make it to this gas station? I have like three miles left of my little gas thing. So I'm on the phone with my dad, I'm like, okay, okay, I'm getting there. And with one mile left in my gas, what it says, it's probably more, let's be honest, but it says I have one mile left, I make it to the gas station. I've never been so relieved in my life. But because of this detour, and because of uh, my hysterics, because I had to like calm down afterwards because I was pretty damn sure, I was like 99% sure that I was gonna be stranded on the like highway to Phoenix with no phone and only being able to tell my dad like a general idea of where I am, right? Not great. Um, so I needed time to calm down. So, long story short, I don't make that flight to Phoenix at all. So my mom then calls United again. Now, the reason my mom's calling is because she's the one that booked it. Because she's, like, ridiculous, has, like, ridiculous status with them. And so in my mind, I'm like, okay, at least I'll have, like, a day or two to recover. Because they said the earliest would be, like, five or six days. But my mom has been known to pull some strings. I don't know what strings. She's been able to work miracles even when people say that it's not possible. So in my mind, I'm like, well, I at least have like a day or two. No, I don't. She calls me and she says, okay, well, you know, you're leaving tomorrow morning. And let me just tell you, I'm done at this point. I don't care. I'm like, I have been trying to go to Liberia for like a week and a half. Oh, whoops. I've been trying to go to Liberia for like a week and a half. I don't care. I, I don't care if I never make it. I'm not going. Um, but of course, you know, I'd feel terrible. My mom spent all this money to get me here. She's like, one would hope, looking forward to seeing me. So, I go. Now, the way she booked me through was she, so there's like this weird thing where there's only one flight out of Brussels to Liberia a day, and that's the problem we were having. Like, that's the hard one to book. 
So it goes, it's actually like, so it goes Brussels to Sierra Leone and then Sierra Leone to Monrovia. But if you buy the ticket from like Brussels all the way to Liberia, you just don't get off the plane in Sierra Leone. But the only way she could book it was like, I had premium economy from Brussels to Sierra Leone. But then she needed to upgrade me on the second part from Sierra Leone to Liberia. Now, for whatever reason, this like totally screwed everything up. Um, also, the flight from Brussels, out of Brussels, was on Brussels Air, and the other ones are thrown th through United. So, it was just a nightmare from beginning to end. So, United told me, when you get to Brussels, you bring this, like, little slip to the people in the terminal that are going to take you to, the, that's going to be, like, the gates to the flights to Africa, and they're going to assign you a seat then, and they're going to check you, and I'm like, okay, totally fine, whatever. So, I go to that terminal. They're looking at my tickets and they're just like super confused because they're saying, oh, well, we see you going to Sierra Leone, but we don't see anything to Liberia. And they're like, well, you need a visa to even leave the plane in Sierra Leone. I'm like, well, I don't have a visa to Sierra Leone. I have a visa to Liberia. So the people at this like terminal gate spend like 30 minutes calling people and eventually they say, well, it, sound, it should be fine. It's all on the computer, but we can't print your seat or your boarding pass for the flights to um, Sierra Leone to Monrovia. But here, I'm gonna hand write it and hand it to you. And I'm like, what the fuck? There's no like stamp. There's nothing that makes it official. Like any fucking Yahoo could take this like boarding pass and write shit on it and be like, ah, I'm getting on the plane. And no, you're not. So. Then I'm like, I have like six hours or five hours before then. So no one, and they're like, oh, just check at the gate and they'll print you a boarding pass and they'll handle it at the gate. But because it's so early, there's no one at the gate. So I go to the Brussels lounge, like the United Star Alliance lounge, which God is so nice. I took a shower. Oof. Did you, and also guys, just so you know, like you don't have to be like super platinum or something to use those. If you're not in first class or business, as long as you're in like premium economy, you can pay like a 30 euro fee to use it. And dude, it's so worth it. Like the shower and they, so they give you a shower. There's, there's like a buffet for food. There are drinks. The amount you would spend like getting a sandwich would be like 10 euros, 12 euros with a drink. So double that and you get to have a shower, as much food as you want, a comfortable place to sit, massage chairs. Like, yo, totally worth it. Always do it. So worth the money. But regardless, so I get there and again, I call my dad and I'm like, I don't know what's going on. They're saying, hopefully this boarding pass works. But again, anyone fucking could have written it. No one's at the gate. I'm going to be stuck in Brussels. <laughs> there are worse places to be stuck. And I guess I was less worried about being stuck in Brussels and more worried about being stuck in Sierra Leone because yeah, no. So then I go, my dad being the wise human he is, he's like, well, it's the Brussels Air Suite, right? Suite, you know, lounge, whatever. It's like, go talk to them, and they handle this shit, because, like, all the hoity-toity people are in there. So I go talk to the woman at the front. She's like, oh, yeah, just hand it to me. I'll have it all out, and I'll bring it to you. I'm like, oh, great. Lovely. Everything's sorted. Wonderful. Um, 45 minutes goes by. I'm supposed to board in, like, 20 minutes. Still nothing. So I go back up to her, and I'm like, hey, I kind of need those boarding passes. And she goes... Well, I have the one from leaving from here to Sierra Leone. Here's the other one. I couldn't print it, but it's all fine. You're ready to go. Just, you know, talk to them at the gate if you need to. If you need to. Of course I'm going to need to. Like, I can't use this funky piece of... There's no... There's no bar... There's nothing on it. Like, what? So, I'm like, okay, it should be... There's enough time now to go talk to people at the gate. Now, before I even talk to people at the gate, I get a notification on my phone saying, oh, your bags have been rerouted. <laughs> Like, it's like things can't get worse. Things can't get worse. Like, what? <laughs> so my bags were rerouted. And on the, like, information, it says, talk to the people. Talk to your airline carrier in Brussels. And my airline car carrier is Brussels Air. So I go to the gate. And I come up with my ridiculous boarding pass to the guy. And I'm like, here's what's happened. And I regale all of this. Now, what this man says to me was so infuriating, but also because I was so tired, like, it almost brought me to tears just of frustration. And again, I don't, like, not again, but, you know, 
I don't think this was his fault or him trying to be rude. I think there is a little bit of a language barrier and I also was probably not super pleasant at this point, to be honest. So I, he says to me, well, is there a reason or why didn't you go to United and sort this like at the United desk in the other terminal? And I was like, because I'm not flying through United, I'm flying through you guys and United gave me this thing saying to talk to you guys. So that's the complete opposite of what it told me to do. So, you know, I don't mean to be rude, but I really don't see how this is my fault. Cause it seemed, it felt like he was being, it felt like I was being told, well, you handled this poorly. You didn't do this the correct way. It was really, really annoying. It's really annoying. Um, so then he's on the phone for God knows how long. And he's saying he'll do what he can, but right now it doesn't look like I can go to Liberia. They're not gonna let me board. I don't have a visa to Sierra Leone. And I'm sitting there being like, what the fuck? What the fuck is happening? So this man is on the phone for God knows how long. Okay, probably like 20 minutes because like we didn't start boarding yet. So 20 minutes or so. And eventually he's like, okay, you can get on the plane. We figured it out. Here's, gonna, here's your seat when you move to business class. Because apparently that was the whole problem. The whole problem was that my seats were changing when I got, when I left Sierra Leone to go to Monrovia. And also that it was, that part was purchased on like, I guess, points. So it was like a whole different system. And since it was using United points, Brussels Air didn't have that information. It was a whole fucking nightmare. But he's like, I don't know anything about your bags. Because <laughs> I'm like, what about my bags? And he's like, but you should be fine. Does this story end there? It almost does. It almost does. But then when I go to board this plane, thank God that man was there, the man I spoke to. So I go to board the plane and this woman takes my boarding pass and scans it and it beeps red and it says, unable to board, passenger unable to board. And I'm like, what the fuck? And she goes, you can't go on the plane. Like you're not able to board, let me look up why. And I'm like, I can tell you exactly why because this is what I've been dealing with for the last five hours or a ridiculous amount of time. This is why I can't board. And she's like, well, there's nothing I can do about it. But then luckily, the saintly man who helped me before, who was a little, mm, but you know, now at this point he's saintly because he fixed the problem. He stands there and he's like, we've sorted it out. Just let her on the flight. And I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to do that because the little machine's saying, don't let her board. But he's like, I've called everyone. Just let her on the flight. So finally, I get on the flight. Yeah, and that's pretty much the end of the story. My bags did indeed make it. Um, but it was a trial and no offense but if i were united and someone had to delay their travels a week and a half uh there they had to be rebooked four times because three times for whatever reason we were delayed we messed this up mechanical this weather that you would think that they'd be apologetic in some way or at least say, oh, don't, you don't have to use Miles to increase her seat or get her a better seat. We'll just give it to you out of the inconvenience. But no, because United doesn't give a shit. Like, no offense to United. So if United watches this ever, I don't know why you would. What the fuck, man? <laughs> um, I'm definitely, the only reason I would even fly United at this point is my mom has such great status that I get, like, upgrades. Like, I was upgraded a lot here. But it was, like, maybe I'd get upgraded. It was... <sighs> Because people are going to be like, well, you were upgraded and that was them being nice. No, in my original tickets, I had been approved for upgrades. So I missed some of the upgrades after they were changing of flights. Regardless, it was all just a clusterfuck. In United, you kind of suck. Um, I fly back on United. So God knows if I'm going to be able to leave this country ever because of your fucking delays. I mean, getting stuck in Brussels would not be the end of the world. Brussels is beautiful. But I, you know, it's just travel is hard enough without all of these mistakes and all of these problems that require me to spend my limited layovers dealing with stress and with people kind of accusing me of being incompetent. It's annoying, don't like it. So that was the United story. <laughs>